Hello, Mike Hoffman here to talk to you about uh, the Smart Grid and major home area network players. It's the 24th of August, 2009. I'm going to cover three sets of companies, the Gridpoint slash Elixir slash V to G or V to Green. General Electric and Tendril, and then IBM and Trilliant. I want to just go over this at a high level, give some insights that I've gained in my time being involved with uh, the home area network space as well as a number of demand response technologies over the years from both the utility and the end user consumer standpoint. First, Gridpoint. Gridpoint, until recently, did not, in my estimation, have much in the way of product offerings. They were working to integrate their middleware, which is pretty sophisticated and interesting, with any number of end-use pieces of equipment, such as Tendril, Trilliant, Energate, etc. They were evaluating those uh, companies, I think, with partners. They've ended up partnering, or actually buying, Lixir like they bought Vita G, Vita Green, which is Vehicle to Green. Lixir is essentially a lots of protocols in, lots of protocols out to the home area network so that you can control a number of devices. But my estimation of Lixir is, is that they prefer to use their own proprietary protocol, but have the ability to deal with Zigbee, Z-Wave, a number of other protocols as well. I think the point of this was that Elixir had been working with HD Supply, which is Home Depot Supply, and Home Depot had been interested in this technology for their contracting side, selling to contractors such as electrical and HVAC contractors and they wanted to have their bases covered relative to being able to control all sorts of different devices even though currently there aren't a whole lot of Zigbee, Z-Wave, Wi-Fi or other devices out there that are actually working. Um, so it's kind of interesting that they chose to be uh, set up with the ability to connect to a lot of things. Another interesting th standpoint uh, about Gridpoint is their V to G purchase. Um, there's been a spat with the ex CEO of V to G and the uh, CEO uh, parted company now. This was as of this spring uh, when I last talked to that CEO. I don't think that actually um, that's changed to my knowledge, but it could have. Also, um, Gridpoint did a fairly wholesale purge of a lot of their upper management, and people left there last winter and could continue to leave, uh, to my knowledge, through this summer. CEO at uh, Gridpoint has an incredible ability to raise money and hopefully uh, we'll have an incredible ability then to produce a real product. The next grouping of uh, companies that are interesting are General Electric and Tendril. General Electric has, uh, to my knowledge, only gotten religion relative to the smart grid and smart appliances and demand response within about the last year. Last September 2008, I ran into a couple of General Electric folks who were at a Portland General Electric demand response request for proposal meeting. Spoke to them and they said that GE had only been involved for a couple, two or three months with smart appliances. I think at the time there was rumor they might be hooked up somehow also with a major 
recognizable Wi-Fi router manufacturer. <laughs> um, the interesting thing relative to GE is I think they picked a really strong partner in Tendril because Adrian Tuck, one of the or the CEO of Tendril, is one of the founders of the Ember Corporation, which produces the Zigbee chips. So there's a good technical ability there. Interesting things about Tendril, though, are that they've talked a lot in the past about having lots of demonstration units with utilities. Um, they've raised a new tranche of money, but they've not had any press releases on actually um, had product placement with utilities. Now, the utility grapevine has it that there's at least 10 or 20,000 that uh, Tendril has sold to a large Texas utility, units of the home area networks that would include load control modules, programmable communicating thermostats, and other devices. But I've not heard anything about those ever hitting the uh, end use arena yet. Kind of interesting. Also, um, there's the IBM Trilliant Alliance. Interestingly enough, uh, IBM was a big participant in Pacific Northwest Gridwise project, which I was associated with and involved in heavily. Uh, IBM's looking to be the middleware, the product that connects up security, servers, billing, lots of big projects. Um, their partner of Trilliant is, has been a smart meter manufacturer, automated metering infrastructure, advanced metering infrastructure, automated meter reading company for quite a while. The interesting thing here is that the CEO of Trilliant is an ex-General Electric person. Just kind of interesting. The Tendril GE model is two-way broadband based. So is IBM Trillion, but um, Tendril will work with either mesh networks or regular broadband versus Trillion, which is basically focused on a secure mesh network. Lower bandwidth, uh, and I think that lower bandwidth will be a um, choke point for data, for upgrading, etc. Because I have not heard of a rich end user customer experience with the Trillion system. The Tendril system and the with GE and then the Lixar system with Gridpoint both have pretty rich web interfaces to my knowledge and would be very interesting. So it's going to be an interesting future with regards to the smart grid and home area networks. In a future video I'll talk about customer participation in the smart grid and what a home area network would really need to have, in my opinion, to be a successful product for residential and commercial use. Thank you and have a good uh, day.